So this is 4.3, so still in 4.3, but this is going to be how the second derivative affects the original graph instead of the first derivative. So the second derivative tells us about concavity, so it tells us about the shape of the graph. So the first derivative tells you whether the function is increasing or decreasing, and second derivative tells you concavity. So you can think about the sign of the second derivative. You can also look at the direction that the first derivative is going. So if you think the first derivative is decreasing, that means the slope of the first derivative is going to be negative. So that means the second derivative of your original function is negative, and then other way around for y prime increasing. So if your first derivative is increasing, the slopes are going to be positive, so the second derivative is positive. So the, gra the original function is going to be concave up, so concave up like a cup. If the first derivative is increasing or if the second derivative is positive, and the original function is going to be concave down, so concave down like a frown. If the first derivative is decreasing or the second derivative is negative. So again, the second derivative does not tell you whether the original function is increasing or decreasing. It just tells you about the shape of the graph. So here we're going to look at the concavity of this on a specific interval. So I need to take the second derivative. So the first derivative is going to be 2x. Second derivative is going to be 2. So because the second derivative is constant the entire time, and that constant is always going to be greater than 0, that means it doesn't matter what interval they're giving us, this function is always going to be concave up. Concave up everywhere. So in general though, if you have a specific, if you have an x value here and you have an interval, then what you would need to do is make a sign chart for your second derivative. And where the second derivative is positive, your function is concave up. Where the second derivative is negative, your function is concave down. So now you're going to start having sign charts for your first derivative and sign charts for your second derivative. So you have to think about what is this asking you? Is it asking about concavity? So you would need a sign chart for your second derivative. If it's asking about a function increasing or decreasing or asking about a function having a maximum or a minimum, then you would need a sign chart for the first derivative. So a point of inflection is something else that we use the second derivative for. So a point of inflection is a point where the graph of the original function changes concavity. The tangent line also needs to exist. So, you, you know, most of the time it's going to be something like this where the tangent line is something like this. You could have something where the tangent line is vertical. So in this case, the uh, first derivative technically doesn't exist because this, the slope would be undefined. But we could draw a tangent line. It's just because the slope is undefined. We say the function, the derivative doesn't exist. But you could have a point of inflection there. And then this one, the first derivative would be 0 because the slope is 0. So you have to have a tangent line and the concavity has to change, which means the second derivative has to change sign. So because it's asking us for points of inflection, we are going to need to make a sign chart for the second derivative. So the first derivative... For this one, I'm going to need to do chain rule, so it's going to end up being negative 4x e to the negative x squared. I simplified in one step, so if you didn't simplify at first, it should simplify to this. And then for the second derivative, we're going to need to do a product rule. So it's going to be negative 4 e to the negative x squared, and then it's going to be minus negative. Um, no, it's going to be it's going to be plus, but then there's going to be negatives that cancel out. So um, product rule does have a plus. So this is going to be, I'll just write all of this out. So 4x e to the negative x squared, and then that's going to be negative 2. So I have a negative, negative, that's going to become a positive. So it is going to be a plus in between them. So it's negative 4e to the negative x squared plus 8x squared e to the negative x squared. 
So it does help to simplify these when you're doing, when you're finding points of inflection. So when you need to make a sign chart. So I now need to set this equal to zero and I can factor out a four e to the negative x squared. And then what I'm left with is gonna be one plus two x squared. Um, I factor out a negative, so then this is going to be a minus. If you factor out a positive, you can factor out a positive, that's fine, but then that's going to make this term um, negative if you're going to factor out a positive. I just wanted that first term to be a positive here. So then I set each piece equal to zero. If I set this one equal to zero, it's never, there's never an x value where this exponential is equal to zero, so it's really just this one that I'm looking at. So if I set this one equal to zero, I end up getting plus or minus square root of one half. You can leave it like this. It might make it a little bit easier to look at if you write it as one over square root of two. And then that's what's gonna go on the sign chart. So negative one over square root of two, positive one over square root of two. And so if you're finding a point of inflection, just where the first derivative is equal to zero does not mean the function has a point of inflection. We have to make sure the second derivative changes sign. So I'm plugging numbers into the second derivative. So if I plug something in to the left of negative one over root two, I should be getting positive, something in between, I'm getting negative, and then something to the right of one over, of positive one over root two, I get positive. So the sign is changing. It doesn't matter whether it's changing from positive to negative or negative to positive like it does with the first derivative. So when you're justifying maximums and minimums, the actual sign does matter. So it's going to be a different justification for something changing from positive to negative versus negative to positive. For point of inflection, it does make your justification much easier if you just say the second derivative changes sign. You do not need to say that it changes from, neg from positive to negative here and from negative to positive here, because the more you write in your justification, the more likely you are going to be to say something that is wrong. So both of these points are going to be where a point of inflection exists. Because it says point, you should be listing X and Y. Usually the questions like this though are going to be very specific. They will ask for the coordinates or the ordered pair or just the x value or maybe just the y value. So they usually are pretty clear with what they want. But the word point does mean x and y. So it's going to be negative 1 over square root of 2 is the x value. If you plug that back into the original function, there's not really a whole lot we can do. I mean, leave it as an exact value. When you plug that in, you square it it's going to be positive, but there's a negative in front. So it's going to be negative one half as the exponent and positive one over square root of two is going to give you the same y value. So the y values are going to be the same, but the x values are different. So both of these are points of inflection and you can shorten it. This is a commonly used abbreviation for point of inflection or just write out points of inflection. If you needed to justify, you would just say because, I wouldn't want to say f prime because the function is called y. So y double prime changes sign. So again, you don't need to specify that it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So here is a summary of what the first derivative and the second derivative show us about the original function. So when it says curve, we mean that the curve, that the original curve. So just remember that when y prime is zero or when y double prime is zero, so depending on what it's asking, it's a possible local max or min, possible point of inflection. So you are gonna need to make a sign chart, but if you are asked to justify, then the sign chart is not enough. So the sign chart is good. If you don't have it, it's still correct. You can still write out an explanation of why something has a maximum or minimum or a point of inflection, but a sign chart is going to be really helpful for you. It's just not enough. You need to actually explain what that means if you needed to justify something. So the second derivative test is a test for whether the original function has a 
maximum or minimum. So it's another way of seeing what you, whether the critical point you have is a maximum, maximum or minimum. So instead of using the first derivative, we use the second derivative. So we do need a critical point. So the first derivative is equal to zero. If the first derivative is equal to zero and the second derivative is negative, so that's gonna be this one, we have concave down. If the function is concave down and we have a critical point, then that means the function has a local maximum. And if we have a critical point and the second derivative is con or the second derivative is positive, meaning the original function is concave up, then we have a local minimum. So this is something that you can use to justify, and it doesn't require you to make a sign chart and write out an explanation. This one is a little bit well, you do have to write the explanation of the second derivative being either positive or negative, but it is a little bit less writing for you. So this is another option of how to justify that something has a local extreme value. So I'm going to do this one using the second derivative test, but in general, if you are being asked to find local extreme values, you can use either one, unless the question does specifically specify that you have to do it one way or the other. So this one, I set this equal to zero, I can factor out a three. So that's gonna be x squared minus two. So x equals plus or minus square root of two. And so those are my critical points. Then I need to find the second derivative and evaluate the second derivative at those critical points. So I don't need to make a sign chart if I'm doing second derivative test. So the second derivative is gonna be six x. So the second derivative at negative square root of two is going to be negative. It doesn't matter what the actual number is, I just care whether it's positive or negative. And the second derivative at positive square root of two is gonna be positive. So that means at, at x equals negative square root of negative. At x equals negative square root of two because the second derivative is negative, your original function is concave down. So f has a local max and at x equals positive square root of two, the second derivative is positive, your function is gonna be concave up. So we have a minimum. So I wanted to show you this other wording. In the other video, I did show you what to do if you are if you needed to list the y values. So here, this one is asking for the value. So it's asking for the y values. But I wanted to make sure to go over how you would word the question or how you would word your answer if it's just asking you for x values. So when we talk about x values, we're saying that, that a function has a local max at a particular point when we're talking about the x values versus the actual y value. And then here is a summary graphically about what the first derivative and the second derivative tell us about the shape and whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So I'm gonna make one more video that goes through a couple problems of these. It's something that you don't necessarily have to watch because we will do some practice with it in class, but it's gonna be going through the justification and what work you would need to show for questions that involve the first derivative and the second derivative. We will do a lot of problems in class because it is really common for them to ask you something about using the first or the second derivative as a free response question on the AP test.